Ever since I was pregnant with Alex, I have imagined creating spaces and opportunities for him to be able to learn about the world with curiosity. Spaces that would allow him to see the existence around him in more depth instead of just what is told or fed to him through the media or those in his immediate circle of influence, including myself. I've learned that observing, being curious about the lives around me, giving myself the chance to be in close proximity with people, with animals, has allowed me to see that everything is almost always much more complex and deeper than portrayed on the surface. By observing, I've learned more about the world outside of myself. I found that I not only sympathized, but I empathized with those around me. The more I observed, the more I found that those I initially thought were so different to me and my life were actually not that different after all. This is one of the major reasons why I make it a point to travel with Alex as much as possible. But there's been one specific space I've wanted to and will continuously want to create for Alex, and that is a space for him to be in close proximity with animals. Because I believe that animals deserve the freedom to live a life of their choice, but the world we live in today shows otherwise. I want to be able to provide spaces where Alex can learn to respect all life forms, not because I tell him to, but because he feels connected to them from his core. I believe when you're truly connected to another being, when you can see the world from their perspective, you almost always want the best for them, and very rarely will want to inflict any pain on them, if any at all. And I wanted to give Alex the chance to experience that too, so that one day he can choose the life he wishes to live, the decisions he wishes to make, and the actions he wishes to take from a more intuitively informed space within himself. So when we were in Georgia and I heard that there was an elephant sanctuary not far from our accommodation, I said to my hubby Josh, we have to go. In the morning, we went bungee jumping off Africa's highest bridge, 216 meters above ground. Then after having some lunch and ice cream, we headed to the Neisner Elephant Park, a place where elephants that were previously in circuses, that were rescued from cows, elephants no longer wanted by their owners as they were seen to be unworkable, orphaned calves that could not fend for themselves, are all brought to this sanctuary to heal, be taken care of until they are ready to return to their natural habitat. We arrived and were introduced to our guide, Joelle. And because of the COVID protocols and to maintain social distancing, each guide only guided one family at a time. We got onto the transportation vehicles that led us to the fields, where a group of 10 elephants were roaming around, eating branches from trees, splashing and playing in a dam, smothering themselves in mud, and just walking around grazing the grass, occasionally interacting with some zebras. It was like a scene from the Planet Earth documentary series but in real life. We were given a chance to feed the elephants some snacks from carrots to watermelons and while we were doing that we learned that amongst elephants there's usually a matriarch, basically a lady boss that leads the group of elephants. The matriarch at this sanctuary is Sally. Look how the elephants disperse when Sally comes in for the snacks. They respect her immensely but can't help salivating from the sides. Throughout the whole experience, the elephants were free to come and go. They were not forced to approach us or stay by our side. They simply came because they knew we had snacks. And after all, who doesn't like snacks? And as we were walking through the field, Joelle mentioned that we could touch the elephants. At the time, Keisha was the closest to us. She was casually grazing on some grass and Josh and Alex approached her. She was so calm as though she felt at peace and not threatened in any way. Alex frowned as he approached her. Josh put Alex's hand on Keisha and Alex immediately retracted his hand. I think he was a bit shocked by the texture of her skin. Keisha was born in December 2003 and arrived at the Neisner Elephant Park in January 2004. She was actually very close to dying when she first arrived at the elephant sanctuary. The holes in her ears were caused by the other elephants in a translocation that had pushed her away when she tried to suckle after her mother died. 
With the help of the sanctuary, Keisha had made a full recovery and she has settled into her new home here at the sanctuary. I slowly approached Keisha. At first, I must admit, I was a bit hesitant. I slowly put my hand on her. Her skin is really rough and warm and the hair on her skin is very thick. It wasn't like anything I've felt before. Joelle proceeded to explain to us why they have zebras in the park. The reason is because all these elephants are previously domesticated elephants or elephants that needed a place to heal and the zebras help the elephants to learn how to be amongst other wildlife and this is part of assisting them to reintegrate back into their natural habitat as zebras and elephants can coexist without being a threat to each other. When the elephants are ready to reintegrate, they are then sent to bigger nature reserves across the country where they can live a life more aligned to that of which an elephant was designed to do. I think getting close to the elephants, seeing them freely walking, interacting with other animals was a really eye-opening experience for Alex, but probably more for me because I've seen them in situations on the other side of the spectrum, caged, chained and treated in the most horrific and inhumane ways possible. Touching Keisha, looking into her eyes, being able to bring Sally joy by giving her a treat to eat. These little experiences of being in the presence of them makes me feel closer to them. Like how you'd feel when you just had a wholesome conversation with someone that was a total stranger just five minutes ago. That emotional connection. Being curious and getting closer, that proximity opens a space in me for empathy to flourish to empathize with their need for love, connection, for certainty and adventure, to empathize with their past pains and their present joys. I could imagine the pain, the fear, the hurt, the loss, when they are mistreated or have their young or their mothers taken away from them. I could also imagine the joy, the curiosity, the love, the connection that they feel with their family, their friends, in their life, just as is prevalent in mine. And when my mind sees it that way, when this feeling tickles me to the core of my bones, I can no longer accept to see animals in any other state except in the way they were intended by nature. To coexist in harmony with humanity. You hold your budget on the side. So we actually visited Neisner's Elephant Park right after we did the bungee jump off Africa's highest bridge. If you haven't watched that video, I'm going to leave the link here. But because we filmed it on the exact same day, so the camera had the same problem as the previous video. The microphone had a little bit of a malfunction, so there was no audio. But this gave me the opportunity to share my experience at the Elephant Park, which is something so dear to my heart in the special way to you. I hope you enjoyed the video and if you did leave a thumbs up and subscribe if you want to see more of our adventures.